All right, we're deep into the fun now. We're on to our third lesson of this unit. And this one we're going to learn to add and subtract. So let's get some of that going. We did a little bit with the estimating. This time we're not going to estimate them, though. We're just going to add and subtract. Okay, now that you got the play, uh, day's, today's date and page number down, place number, that makes no sense. Uh, here's your warm-up for today. So do a couple estimating problems for me for adding and subtracting to a specific place value. And then for three and four, using compatible numbers, find me an answer in product or quotient, depending on if you're multiplying or dividing. All right, so here are the answers I chose to pick for one and two, which you probably had exactly the same since we were specific to those. Three and four, you may have been a little different. You could have had something like 270 or 300, something close to that. Um, I chose 30 and 10. I could have chose 25 and 10 and gotten 250. And for number four, I chose 44 and 4, because I figured that was pretty easy, and I got 11. You may be a little different. That's okay. Now that we're warmed up, let's get into the new knowledge. So let's look at uh, some information here using adding and subtracting or, or subtracting. Uh, at the 2004 U.S. Gymnastics Championship, Carly Patterson and Courtney Cupitz tied for the all-around title. Here were the scores for Carly Patterson. So what if we said, what's her total score if you added these up? Well, the most important thing you're going to have to do with this is make sure you have the place values lined up properly, and then make sure you know how to add. Let's show you what I mean. Here's the part you can put down in your notes. So we saw that we had 9 and 7 tenths, 9 and 3 tenths, and 9 and 45 hundredths. So what I did is I made sure I lined up all the decimal points and the place values, and then with 9.7 and 9.3, there was nothing in that hundredths place value, but since 9 and 45 hundredths did have a number in that hundredths place value, I decided to put a zero there just as a placeholder so it makes our math a little easier in our heads. So now that it's all lined up, to find out her total score, we just have to add 0 plus 0 plus 5, 7 plus 3 plus 4, which is actually 14, so that makes us have to carry the 1, up there, 999, nine, nine, and 1 is 28. So her score was 28 and 45 hundredths. So it's close to an estimation if you did one of about 28. So that's a pretty good score, considering I think the highest score you can get is a 10. And over three events, that would be a 30. Pretty good score. All right, here's another problem that you can look at if you wanted to think about subtraction. We could say, how many more points do you think Carly would need to have gotten that perfect score of a 10? Well, we know that we're going to have to take 10 minus the score she had, which was a 9 and 3 tenths in one spot. So find the difference between the 9 and 3 tenths and 10. Again, you line up all the place values, put zeros as placeholders, because just like with fractions, you couldn't subtract nothing from a fraction. So we got to put a 0 in that placeholder there before we do 0 minus 3. And you would get 7 tenths. It's really no different than if you're getting rid of the decimal points and you were just looking at them as whole numbers and you had 100 minus 93. It's the same exact thing. You would borrow here and here. This would become 9. This would become 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. It's no different. The only big difference or the little difference, I should say, is just adding that decimal point. So if you need an example of how to subtract, put that down in your notes as well. All right, for today in your first practice, the only thing I want you to do is question 1, 2, and 3. So you're dealing with Ray's triathlon training page. Number one, how many miles in all was used for training? How many miles were just the run and the swim? And then how much further did Ray cycle than swim? So you got a couple additions and a subtraction. Come back when you're done, you'll see my work and my answers. All right, so here are the answers. For number one, I got 20 and 2 tenths miles. Just added them all up. I had to make sure the place values were there. And I actually added a placeholder with swimming to that hundreds place value. Uh, for the number two, I was just adding running and swimming all together. And for cycling, I just had to subtract the large number from the small number and get 12.65 more miles biking. So I kind of understand how the triathlon training goes. My wife runs these all the time. So she's always running, swimming, and biking. This seems like some pretty accurate numbers.
All right, hopefully you got the same answers I did, and you're on track. So sometimes, and here in example two, we're going to try to do some mental math. Sometimes mental math is a lot easier than trying to write it all out, because I know you guys hate showing your work. So sometimes you got to be able to chunk numbers together or be able to cluster them. So if we look at the first example we have here, we have 1 and 8 tenths plus 2 tenths. Now, when you chunk 8 and 2 together, you know that you get a zero number. You get 10. Well, that should help you to understand that really what you're doing is you're closing off the decimal and you're creating another whole number. So 1.8 and 2, if you looked at that as 18 and 2, you'd know you get 20. The only difference here is you just got to make sure you put the place value and the decimal point in the right spot. So for number four, you're going to have a lot of problems in your life where you have a whole number and you have to subtract away a decimal. Here's one of them. So think about it this way. you got four and you're having to take away a number that is just a little less than one. Well, if we did some estimating, seven-tenths is close to one. So you know you'd have to do four minus one, which is three. So we're looking for an answer that's somewhat close. Well, with this one, you could try to do some mental math, trying to do some numbers in your head where you could make four, just give it a zero decimal point that usually helps you to kind of figure it out. It's like seeing 40 minus 7. So 4 minus 0 is 4. But you know you're going to have to borrow, so it becomes a 3.3. .3. So these are just some things to think about when you're trying to do some mental math. Again, sometimes with mental math, it just isn't working. So you pull out the old pencil and paper, and you just kind of hash it out to be able to figure it out. But I also know in real life, most of you are just going to grab your calculator and work it out as you're sitting in line at the grocery store. All right, today I want you guys to push yourself a little bit. So 14 through 21 are the problems you're going to want to do in your notebook. Now, I know there's some of these you can try some mental math with. Go ahead and do that. If you struggle with that, pull out the paper, pull out the pencil. But I do want you to put the answers down. Good luck. So you can see the difference between my work and my numbers. I circled the answers. So you can see what I did is I rewrote everything so it was stacked and kind of shorthanded because I want to make the math easy for myself and not take too much time. So you'll notice with 19, you could have had 4 and 30 hundredths, but again, we don't need that zero tacked on, so I just made it 4.3. And for 20, we actually had 25.0 when you did all the adding. But again, I dropped the point zero because there's no need for it, so I just made it 25. If you had 4.30 and 25.0 for 19 and 20 respectively, it'd still be correct. It's just adding a little extra than you, that you don't need. All right, so now that we have kind of looked at adding and subtracting and feel comfortable again with it, let's take a look at some of these plug and chug kind of problems and how they would work. So remember, whenever you have something like this where it says you have a problem like 6 and 73 hundredths and you're subtracting from x, well, we know that we have no idea what x is unless it tells us, and here it does. So all you got to do is, and write this problem down in your notes, you replace that x with the actual number, and here it's telling that x is 3 and 8 tenths. So we plug that in, and you subtract. So you can see I rewrote it as 6.73 minus 3.8, and I added a 0. Just make sure my place value is all lined up. When I plug and chug, I get 2 and 93 hundredths. Not too hard, not too shabby. Here's another one. Let's say we had, again, 6 and 73 hundredths minus x. But here we have down x as 9,765 ten thousandths. So the same applies, though. You plug and chug, and then I rewrote mine. Now you can see that I have 6.73, and then because I have extra place values in the other number, the 2 and 975 ten thousandths, 9,765 ten thousandths, I just added some zeros. So from there, then, I can do a lot of borrowing and moving things over to be able to get the answer of 3 and 7,535 ten thousandths. This is an example of if these are real numbers in the real world, you'd probably use estimating because it'd get you close enough and it'd be a whole lot easier. But here, I need you to work with decimals, so we threw a problem like this together. All right, so for practice here, I have plug and chug problems, 
and I'm going to be nice to you now, and I'm not going to have you do 22 through 29. I'll leave that as practice for someone who may be struggling with this. We're going to do 8, 9, 10, and 11 on the bottom. So go ahead and work on 8, 9, 10, 11, plugging and chugging all those numbers in for the same value, 5 and 35 hundredths, and then you're subtracting whatever the other number is. Good luck. Come back when you're done. We'll see if you have the same answers that I do. All right, so here's the work I have and the answers I have. And to try to help you out and see where I'm putting zeros as placeholders, I went ahead and changed the color of them so you can see how they were put in there. That helps me to be able to know where I have to borrow and move, move things. So hopefully you got those all right. All right, the box thought today looks huge. Wow. So you're going to go ahead and do these three problems and make sure you give me a huge answer, real good answer, good sixth grade response in all three of them. We're going back on number three, back to that Carly Patterson problem. Um, so you can see if maybe some of the work you've already written down will help you to answer that. And here's your quiz, five questions. Get away a little box so we can see it. number five. Go ahead and add or subtract all these problems. Show your work where needed and uh, come to me when you're done. And that's today's video, short and sweet, to the point. Hopefully you got it down. You'll have your homework coming up. We'll see you next time. Uh, this is the end of the first half of our unit. So next up is quiz time. Good luck on that. We'll see you on the other side of the quiz.